We've come together today to lift up our hearts and souls before God's throne of grace and to lay ourselves bare at that throne. And one way in which we do that is through our prayers. These are chances that we have to bring before us those things that weigh on our hearts. These are opportunities that we have to rejoice and give thanks for where we have seen God moving in our midst. These are opportunities simply to say to God, thank you for hearing us. Hear our prayers today, O Lord. As we come together in prayer this morning, we have several things we need to remember. Uh, Brownie Polly is in the CCU unit down at Johnston Memorial Hospital. He is uh, uh, went in Friday night with pneumonia in both lungs, and so he's on a, a real strong antibiotic right now, and uh, other things are going on as well. So please keep Brownie and the family in your prayers. Also, let's keep Ashley Turner in our prayers following the death of her grandfather uh, this past Friday. Uh, the family's at the funeral home this morning, so they don't have any arrangements made out. But once we find those un arrangements, what they are, we will send a message out to everyone. What other things do we need to lift up in prayer this morning? Over here for Phil. See, this is a praise and a concern. It's a pra <laughs> praise for me, concern for Patty. Well, uh, <laughs> yesterday was our 49th wedding anniversary. Okay. So I think you can understand why it'd be a praise for me and a concern for her. But we're headed toward 50. This way, okay, coming across. Um, I actually have three. Um, we've been praying for um, Janice Triplett and her husband, and he's having some more problems, and so he's going for another PET scan. So we hope that no more tumors have returned, but they may have. Another one is Zach Carter is the young boy that we've been praying for. He uh, did well with his first round of chemotherapy. He's going for a second round of chemotherapy, and his liver enzymes have been up. So if we could please pray that his liver enzymes will come down so that he can have his second round of chemotherapy. And then also I have another coworker. Um, uh, her name is Lisa Buchanan. Her, her husband, Chris, I think that's his name, they have just found out he had a stroke back at the end of the school year. Young man, not had any problems, couldn't figure out why he had a stroke. Well, they found out that he has a rare genetic disorder, and there's no cure for it. He will just continue to have strokes, and will dementia also comes with those strokes. So one, one thing is that they don't know how long you know, there's no cure, but they don't know the duration of this genetic disease. Also, her children have, their children have a 50% chance of having this genetic disorder. And so if they have three children, so if you could please pray, they're, they're right now discerning whether they're going to get the children, whether the children are going to get tested for this or not. Rick? If we uh, prayed for Barbara Fry, one of my former students' mother. I went by to see her in Stanton this week. She's in remission. The tumors are shrinking. She's able to drive herself to chemo and everything, and she looked great. So our prayers are working for her. Okay, Dixie. Pastor Dorn. Um, if you could just pray for traveling mercies for my aunt and uncle, Deb and Henry Denig. They're the ones that live on a boat. They're in Canada right now, um, up near. Uh, I forget where they are because uh, I keep traveling through Canada, so I lose track. But um, but they are getting ready to uh, head to Chicago area in a couple of days, and then from there they will start a long and previously for them untraveled journey down the Mississippi all the way back down to um, the Gulf of Mexico so that they're on that side of Florida come uh, wintertime where they spend uh, the winter. So just uh, it's it's – the Mississippi is, is very finicky sometimes, and um, they'll be, they've never traveled it before by boat, so just traveling mercies for them for the next few weeks. Okay. Dale? Dixon. 
He was president of West Moreland Coal Company, passed away last night. He was in a meeting uh, giving a speech for some West Moreland people, and he had a heart attack and died. Okay. Joe, if you'll come down this way. Go ahead, Beth. I just want to remember Martha and Kenny Spurlock as they travel to Colorado and back. They're taking their son Luke out there to start his new life. And Kenny was trying to pass kidney stones as they got ready to leave. So we need to pray for them as they travel back home. They're two or three hours west of Kansas City somewhere, and hopefully no kidney stones. So keep them in your prayers. Okay. Dottie? I just didn't want the service to end before I said how tickled I was to see Jenny Shoup here this morning yes, with indeed. her grandson and, and David, so. Her granddaughter. Okay, Bill? Uh, continue to keep Judy in, our, in your prayers. Uh, she had an accident here last week and broke her nose. Uh, had it reconstructed, and right now she's fighting through the... the uh, splint and all the problems that go with it, but uh, she is improving, so just keep her in her prayers. If you might have noticed, I'm in my big boy pants today instead of the, uh, instead of the shorts. So that means there's no brace under these pants right now, and so this knee is uh, supporting me at 100%, and I may be sitting down more than I wanted to today, but I need, need to take a, sit, a seat after that initial stand-up time. So here we go. Cindy? Um, I'd like for you to remember the family of Ed Cruisenberry. He was a very good friend of ours, and he passed away suddenly last Sunday. He was 53 years old, and um, his family lived here in Big Stone probably 10, 15 years while he was the manager for Coke. And um, they've been gone about 10 years. He was a full-time pastor now in Bristol at Calvary Baptist Church, but his wife and two daughters and grandchildren are having a very difficult time. Okay. Are there others? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and most holy God, we come before you giving you thanks for this opportunity to lift up these joys, these concerns, these thanksgivings, these prayers, and we know that there's probably lots of other things that are still on our hearts that we haven't spoken, but you know about those as well. And so we just invite you into our lives. We invite you in into this worship service in a very special and powerful way. We'd ask that you would strengthen us, that you would embolden us, that you would guide us and heal us and love us and help us to be the people that you have called us to be. Help us to put on the new nature that Christ has made available for us through his death and through our baptism. Help us to understand your love for us and, and what it meant to you to send Christ into this world to die for our sins. So just strengthen us, Lord, and help us to know that in you we can find rest and strength for all things. And now may we join together in praying the prayer that Christ has taught us to pray. Our Father. By the Gloria Patri here a cappella. There's two versions of it, and I get the versions mixed up in my head. So I'm hoping we're going to start. I'm going to start on the one that we're used to singing. If not, just join with me. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost. As it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. A little off key. 
Is that the one we normally sing? No, no well. <laughs> you volunteer to do it next time for us, Rick? Because we need to learn this one too. 